Good morning, everybody, in this uh, very early morning hour <laughs> for Tbilisi. So not everybody is present yet, but uh, I'm sure that some other people will come a little bit later. I'm happy that uh, all my panelists this morning are here. Um, our task this morning is a very um, interesting one, I think, um, to assess Western engagement, Western democracy support in the South Caucasus region. Um, and it will be kind of self-reflexive uh, uh, endeavor what we're doing here because uh, for Westerners and one uh, <laughs> regional expert here at this table, and I think we We've got a fascinating combination of um, academic and uh, practical competence and uh, not just uh, academics together with uh, practitioners, but uh, a fascinating combination in person um, of uh, people who have worked um, for um, democracy support institutions like NDI uh, or in uh, different government positions and have a huge record of academic research um, on the topic. So I think it's, uh, it's a very promising panel. Um, the procedure I would like to propose for our discussion this morning is, uh, is the following. We will at first um, get only quite short inputs from our panelists each by seven to ten minutes, and I will be very strict in, uh, in limiting uh, this first uh, input in order to later um, have a conversation first among us here at the panel, and then um, go to, into a broader uh, discussion with all of you. I think would after yesterday's discussion, which once more um, gave us an opportunity to look at the complexity um, of the region, of not only political complexity, but also social complexity of the South Caucasus region, um, one question which comes up for me is, of course, uh, to what extent um, Westerners, Western institutions, Western decision makers, both at governmental institutions and at uh, non-governmental institutions do really understand uh, this complexity. Are they really um, ready to analyze it, to accept it, and to develop their policies and their strategies in accordance uh, to this uh, complexity? So, uh, to say it uh, shortly, how superficial or how deeply engaged is this kind of uh, Western approach we've seen over the years. Um, the second question um, which came up um, at least in connection with this short exchange about Azerbaijan and uh, as the lobbying work in the West is the question of credibility. Um, to what extent um, can and to what extent should Western support uh, be based on credibility? Um, is it possible for Western governments to be credible when they have, at the same time, when they say they, they are supporting democratic, uh, democratic development and rule of law, and of course at the same time they have their, their certain geostrategic, economic interests, and so on, to what extent does this hamper um, incredible support for democratic development in the region. And the third question, um, which we partly already discussed yesterday, to what extent is it adequate and possible to approach a region as a region? Is the regional approach um, the right one, the correct one? Um, we are celebrating here 10 years of the South Caucasus Regional Office of the Heinrich Böll Foundation, so it's a, definitely a question and a problem or a challenge uh, which um, we discuss very often um, in regard to our own work. 
Um, but I wouldn't ask um, my panelists now to um, answer all those questions at once. I think these are is enough stuff for discussion later on. Um, let me shortly introduce um, the people sitting at this table here. I start with Manala because I know her best in this system, <laughs> even without any papers. Manala Kutlatze um, is uh, a specialist uh, and sitting here not only as a long-standing friend and partner of the Bell Foundation with her um, NGO uh, Green Alternative, which uh, that is not only uh, in our judgment the most competent and most relevant environmental organization in Georgia, but she is um, a very good expert on the issue we are discussing here because she has been working uh, with the Central and Eastern European Bank Watch Network as a coordinator for South Caucasus region and Central Asia. Yeah, may not mention it as well. So she is really a specialist in monitoring Western financial uh, institutions and, all, and, and uh, Western um, financial support in general. Next to her is uh, Lincoln Mitchell, one of the uh, first that I mentioned when I said that we have an interesting combination both of academic and um, practical competence here. Lincoln uh, used to work for National Democratic Institute um, in the first half of the 2000s and in many countries of the world, among them in Georgia from 2002 to 2004. So he witnessed um, or was kind of part of the US approach during and after the revolution and he is a well-known expert um, on the South Caucasus but not only and he has recently published a fascinating book on colored revolutions which I can only recommend to everybody of you. Um, please uh, apologize that I do not uh, cite now all academic affiliations here. You can, you, you can have a look um, at the materials for our conference. Next to Lincoln, we have um, Adrian Blisko. Adrian is a historian um, and a specialist on Europe, um, participating in fascinating um, projects on Europe in the 19th century. Uh, I haven't asked you yet uh, to what extent Europe in the 19th century also expands to the Southern Caucasus. Is it part of this research or not? I, I just don't know. <laughs> yes. yes, it does, but um, it depends also on the way how one frames the research, individual research on which you were involved in. Uh, but of course, okay. Georgia is that part of the, the space, of the European space in the 19th century. And Okay. And Adrian teaches at the New York Free University, New York Free University in Prague. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Charles University where there's this course on the uh, uh, Russian and Northern Empire in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I am also uh, New York University in Prague, it's a private uh, institution, uh, higher education, where, uh, where I teach uh, external relations, relations of the European Union. Policies. Last session also the question of uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have been able to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to my right, to your left, um, Jana Kopsova. She is the wider Europe program coordinator <coughs> on the, on, at the European Council of Foreign Relations. This is a very um, interesting non governmental think tank. Um, dealing um, mainly with European foreign policy and the foreign policy of the European Union. And she's an expert on all these questions related to wider Europe, European neighborhood policy, Eastern partnership. Um, of course, it's of particular importance uh, to have you here to discuss uh, European um, approaches. Thank you for being with us today, Jana. And last but not least, um, Charles Fairbanks. I'm very happy that this conference gave me the opportunity to meet you for the first time because I've 
heard so much about you during all these uh, 10 years. You are kind of uh, at, at this table the most long standing expert on the Caucasus, and uh, so many people know you. <laughs> and uh, you also have a very fascinating combination of um, a state affiliation in the 80s being um, at, this, at the State Department, working at the State Department and working as a foreign policy advisor for two administrations, for the Reagan and then later the um, senior Bush administration. Um, but uh, you are now mainly um, working as an academic and senior fellow at the Hudson Union Institute in Washington, D.C. And you've done a lot of work on Georgia, as I know. And you lived in Belize for many years, so um, it's good to have your senior observation <laughs> of the topic we're discussing today. Um, I think we we follow um, our program and start with. Okay. 